he is. Let's get him. It's just a pile of Lee. Oh, shit. Whoop. 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 Come on. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Duck and, duck and weave, duck and weave, duck and weave, boys. Duck and weave. We got this. Yeah. Easy, easy. Oof. Easy peasy. Got him. <laughs> Forlorn Temple. Let's do it. Oh, that epic music. Let's go talk to the shopkeeper some more, shall we? Can't believe this year's almost over, right? I'm pretty good, Crow. Pretty good. Uh, let's see. Don't have enough for the upgrade just yet. Forlorn Temple, huh? That's a sad one. How so? Haven't paid much attention during history lessons, have you? Adventure types rarely do, I get it. So the short of it is that four-headed monster who, will, who would have killed you earlier if that was cooler than you, uh... If that cooler than you hero hadn't intervened, that's the Demon King. He brought his armies to the human realm many centuries ago and destroyed their stronghold, forcing them to retreat into hiding. And he's been sitting on their throne ever since. And you mean this is all that is left of the human legacy? For what it's worth, I'm sorry. No way, I will go and take down that Demon King right now. You wouldn't be the first to try. Well, I can't just stand by while some evil monster gloats over my people's misery. You are still too weak to consider taking on even his second in command. I'm going. I bet you can't even make it to the entrance without falling into the pit. Watch me. Oh, I will. What do you want to chat about? You have any stories to share? Of course, here's one for you. There once was a princess looking for a suitable husband. She sent an invitation to all neighboring princes, stating that the main trait she was looking for was sensitivity. Where's water? <laughs> I forgot, there's like actually a lot of reading in here if you want to go through it and whatnot. And I really like the lore in the story, so we're gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah, you did go by pretty fast, man. This is true. Contenders came and went, attempting to pass the, her test. Uh, you will be my guest tonight, the princess would explain. All I need you to do is sleep on that pile of mattresses. The next morning, she would ask them how their night was. I had the best sleep of my life, each would reply, confident that they had proved they didn't fear the dark, or that they could be easy guests. They were all promptly dismissed. One day, an especially sensitive prince reported he couldn't sleep at all. I don't know what was up with that pile of mattresses, he went on. It looked comfortable enough, but when I laid on it, it was like I had a fork stuck in my kidney. They got married the next day. Oh, everyone knows that story. There was a pee underneath the pile so that someone who's extremely sensitive wouldn't be able to sleep. Yes, but have you ever heard of what happened after? <laughs> For the first few weeks, everything was amazing. The prince would always complain. Just the guy she asked for. When the soup wasn't too hot, it's the cutlery that was too cold. When the music wasn't too loud, the paintings were uninspired. And when the clothes were itchy, the poems were predictable. Until one day, just like that, it dawned on the princess that she was in, in a toxic relationship. Not only was her husband a drag, she had voluntarily picked him for exactly that reason. It dawned on her just like that how this whole love story was nothing more than two people whose dysfunctions matched like puzzle pieces. Incredibly humble by regal standards, she realized that she was the only person in all her problems delved into personal growth, then got a divorce. She lived happily ever after. The end. Wow. Damn. That's, uh, that's brutal, man. That's some brutal shiz. Yeah, sometimes you just, uh, don't realize it. Yeah, he was right. Couldn't get over the bridge. So now we're stuck on the catacombs. 
<laughs> oh, you scared me. I thought you were an undead. What kind of creature are you? You've never seen a phobkin? A phobkin? We are trying to build a technically very hard working, but each one of us is by a unique fear, which we are named after. What's your name? Necro. Necro? So you fear the dead and somehow ended up in the catacombs? Ironic, isn't it? Well, I fell trying to repair the Temple Ruins bow, and I was easily paralyzed by all this morbidity. Anyway, thanks for stopping me out, but I really shouldn't get back to work. You do that, little guy. You do that. Oh. This fucking guy. Go, let's go, let's go! Okay, let's see what upgrades we can get. We've got a lot of money now. <clears throat> can chat, too. What do you want to chat about? Uh, current area. Hey, you made it to the catacombs. Okay, anything I should know? Not really. It's a pretty standard stuff. Skeletons and bats. Oh, evil wizards, too? You bet. A necromancer even took over. A necromancer even took over is a better way to actually say that line. <laughs> Spooky. Clichéd. I suggest you get this area out of the way. There are more original ones lined up. Okay. <laughs> what do you do here? I study magic. Can you teach me? Not really. Why not? Because you're not ready. Ready for what? For magic. Come on, you just asked. No, but I meant... Believe me, learning magic is a lot harder than following a conversation. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, how did that epic raid on the Demon King go? <laughs> did you manage to save the world and restore your people's honor? It's not fair, the bridge was in shambles. Well, we wouldn't have much of an adventure if you faced off against the big villain right away, now would we? He's got a point. He's got a point. <laughs> Chachaskis more than meets the eye. I try. <laughs> I try. Any stories to share? Of course, here's one for you. There once was a poor old lady who had nothing in life, save for a small sack and a pear tree. Her name was Madame Misery. Her whole family ate misery, and sometimes there wasn't even enough misery to go around. One day, she was visited by a starving beggar who asked whether she had any food to spare. She didn't, but her heart was big as her situation was unfortunate. So she served the beggar a few clumps out of the tasteless broth she had simmering and then invited him to help himself to a few pairs. The beggar removed his cloak, revealing himself as a deity. He was disguised as a beggar to see whether there was any kindness left in the world. Touched by Madame Misery's generosity, he offered to grant her a wish. Let me guess, she didn't want anything, and it's immoral about living f uh, frugally. No, no, this is good. Let me continue. She mentioned a lot of people were stealing her fruits, which jeopardized her chance to eat every day. Her wish was simple, an enchantment on her pear tree so that it would trap anyone who stole from it until she decided to free them. The divine visitor granted her wish and took his leave. Time went by and she scolded many thieves, but soon realized that most of them were starving children. She decided to take it upon herself to feed and educate them, and soon became the pillar of a thriving new generation. Ever happy and generous, Madame Misery got so old that her face looked at like an elephant's knee. And then one day death came for her. Death, following the protocol, inquired about her last request. I would like to eat one last pear from my tree, she said. Would you be kind enough to grab one for me? Death climbed into the tree to grab a pear, getting trapped in the process. The old lady decided to never let death out of the trap, and since then there has been misery in the world. Oof. The end. Right? What's the moral? Being selfless justifies being selfish later? Or selfless be, uh, justifies being selfish later. Excuse me. Generosity begets misery. I don't know. It's a fairy tale for kids. I just thought I just thought the idea of a death trapped in a pear tree was interesting. <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs>